Greetings. This is the tape of uh, showing summer flowers. The first flower I'm going to demonstrate will be rose roses. There are so many kinds of uh, roses. And this one I show you too. One with so-called splashing ink technique, the pink one, by having only very pale color and uh, doing all the petals very freely. The lower part I have the white one, the white rose with outline and have a little bit the yellowish gray to suggest the shadow. Here's one you just saw uh, with uh, uh, two very big flowers and a pair of young buds. And in Chinese art, mostly we like to have an art number. But here we had uh, some kind of a uh, uh, different way. Because usually the rose is being used for the wedding gift. So we purposely make a pair and a pair. Uh, they usually say this is so-called a double happiness. This one is slightly different from the other one I just showed you. This one uses white also. So not a, the first thing we have the double thing against the uh, tradition, but also by using white. I'm going to demonstrate the technique using white to identify the patterns. The way of making roses patterns by using white is a very interesting way. First, I will just randomly put a lot of uh, color here and there. And the darker in the middle. I will do it again for the second flower. Surely, the general speaking, the shape of the uh, flowers is already there. But uh, the petals, not very clearly uh, separated or rather indicated. Then we will have uh, also. the young ones. I mentioned the, the other tape. There's a general rule. We have to make our composition following the rule of uh, a triangle. Here, one, two, three, and four, but the still showing a very sharp triangle. Now I'm going to have white. It's very really little white at my tip of uh, the brush. This is a way to identify each pattern. Surely, immediately you see the dimension. You see this is a pattern with a 
very bright color at the tip. And for this one, Then we add a little white here too. We may add a little bit of yellow and to suggest the statement. Maybe sometimes, but also not necessary. We may omit that. Then after that, we're going to have the leaves. Surely, many roses may have a piece of a leaf complete lay with uh, seven pieces. But uh, I learned from my teacher, always have three or five. Because seven is a little bit too long, a little bit too heavy. We need a very dark green and your brush must be very saturated with uh, the green color. First we're going to have the green color with a little touch of red. Then we're going to have uh, young leaves. The young leaves are also supposed to have odd number. Now I'm uh, making only three. Surely when I talk about a five means five. Okay, then we're going to have uh, Steer leaves with reddish color at the tip of my brush. Uh, by doing so, our leaves automatically much darker because the red met the green created very dark shade. I will show you one very clearly about a five. One in the middle, one on this side, a smaller one here. Now if I put a line here, means this is a side view one. But if I put two more here, then that is a complete one. When it is uh, at the end of uh, the leaf, connecting with, they usually will have some small things coming out like that. That's the way they uh, start leaving the uh, stem or branch. Then we're going to have a more uh, surely this also supposed five. I um, put a darker green here just to try to show the brightness of my pink. Here we are. Then 
five. Then we're going to have some lighter color, or once again, some younger. from outside in. And uh, here surely needs some uh, connections. Now how to make the throngs? Now I pause and take off quickly. The lower part, surely I use the block. The upper part, I will use spring. For example, here. some uh, old branches. Surely the gardener, the good gardener already made the decision to cut this off. But uh, for better uh, composition's sake, we usually like to have This is a dead one. Uh, then also need some decoration here. I may even add uh, one or two dead leaves. After that, we're going to have a much darker color for the vein. Surely the northern school uh, make this kind of flower very carefully, meaning they even make not only the veins in very detail, they even make the edge of each leaf with uh, very fine teeth. But in my school, just let the ink run to create that kind of a fuzzy, not complete, smooth edges. If we like to uh, correct some part, we usually put uh, some brown color at the tip. Surely some artists may add some uh, wheat instead of uh, dead branches. Looks like I already completed the painting. I may sign either here or here or here. Now I may begin to, to sign here. Surely we have to have a very sticky white. 
but、uh, not too hard, not too sticky, still easy to spread. The way of、uh, applying white,、uh, I like to once again emphasize the brush should be clean and the white at the very tip. So the raining slightly, a little bit. The first one here is a solid white, but the rest of them, the white spreads to the brush, and also on top of the pink, make the petals some are in, some are out, have the feeling of、uh, three dimension. Now I'm going to show you how to paint a day lily.、Uh, in China, day lily are very commonly being painted by artists because this is the symbol of motherhood. And so, when the、uh, family like to tell people that is the room or the hall, the building for mother, they usually use the words of the day lily. In Chinese, Xuan. So when you read a、uh, uh, poetry about the Xuan Tang, means where the mother lived, and even indirectly say, "My mother." The day lily very commonly being planted all over the、uh, country because they、uh, not only appreciate the beauty, also they eat the young bud for. Cooking, and I will show you how to do it. To put a yellow and the orange color on my brush, the yellow here, the orange there, I will move my brush this way. By turning, then I will charge my brush once again. Have more orange put on the tip. Then surely there are six petals. And very interestingly, my teacher taught this way. Said,、uh, paint only five petals. It's an odd number, easy to arrange. Definitely, he believed five petals is more beautiful than six. Then after that, we、we'll、have to put a little bit of brownish, darker color to Then after that, we are going to show and I almost complete the flower, but surely I'm going to add some here. Okay, I'm going to have another. Flower. This time, I'm going to make the flower slightly facing this way, or even a little bit down, down going. Okay, then we're going to have the first petal, and when 
When it's vertical to me, I move vertically down. When it is uh, horizontal to me, I move from left to right. Again, I'm going to put a few dots. The dots in a such a order, near the center are always larger, heavier, and make it light and it disappearing. And surely there will be the lower part. Then we're going to have uh, more yellowish green. I say yellowish green. Here. And also I like to have some yellowish green. forgot to show you some of uh, young ones. The young ones could be here. The young ones could be here. And That's the important thing. The connection. Uh, very clearly we see the roads should be here. Now we have to mix the green color once again. Make your brush saturated with the very strong green. And I even pick a little bit uh, block the tip of your brush. Then the smoothness. It's a very important. No hesitation in the middle. Any hesitation will damage the beauty of your painting. Then after that, usually we will break the monotonous by adding some white then this one will have a smaller leaves and sure usually we may have some butterflies or uh, a little insect. Everywhere you see the Chinese brush painting like to show life, like to show happiness.
least I have the but there, the ink set there. It looks like I've just signed my name here. Uh, we may put a one block line in the middle, but uh, not necessary. Okay. Next one will be puppet. There are so many different colors for this kind of flower. But uh, the leaves very much remain the same. I look at my painting. I do have a dark one, yellowish one, brownish one. They all concentrate to one place and spray now. This is especially arranged by me. It is my own idea of having this type of composition. And the way of making petals, I use a very dry brush with pink or a little bit the orange kind of color first and I mix with a very strong block. Without mixing, without any hesitation, I quickly put it on paper. And this is the way to show all kind of uh, uh, wrinkles in and out. Each petal with uh, lots of uh, uh, textures. I will show you how to do it. Brush in my hand with the orange and a very strong red. I have to put the tip facing me. My hand trembled like this. That's a way to suggest the not a regular, not small the age of the pattern. Actually, sometimes I may add a few lines. And while they're still wet, I add. Now I will show you a younger one. The uh, very strong red will be at the bottom. The inside part, I may even just have uh, some suggestion only, telling people the inside part is very bright, not a dark at all. So this is almost a white petal. Okay, then I may put another one here. See, a general rule, we're going to have a triangle. A very dry brush suggests the uneven surface.
I purposely add a few lines to suggest the wrinkle. Okay. Uh, when the flower is uh, wide open, you may see the center part is very strong. Enough. This one may be a little bit too late, but I still can do that. Then I push this petal at the back. Then I will have green. Uh, the hardest part is this one. I have to begin my movement here, then go down. Beginning here. Okay. This one here. Okay, I like to have a something here. I will make it closer to this. It's only suggestions. This flower with the stem like a bit close to the lotus. We will have uh, more dots here and there. And the, remember this is a general rule, we never make uh, equally the same distance all the way. Some place we may even omit it. For example, one, two, and a three, and one, two, and a three, and one, two, and a three, and one, two, and a three. Okay, then for the leaves, I need uh, even more uh, green. Uh, first, I have to tell myself how I'm going to arrange the this the leaf. This will be another leaf. This will be another leaf. This will be another leaf. And surely here we'll have some leaf coming down to this direction. Okay. And since this part is a little bit confused, I'm going to start this part first, having some very dark color to have one in front. Then I may have uh, two or three others with a much lighter color. I leave a few places open so I have room for my new idea, new leaves.
This is a side way and a side view leaves. And here we have another leaves, much lighter color, suggesting the lip far behind. The reinforcement, like what I'm doing, by adding darker lines, also suggests the dimension. So you can see this part is deeper, no light, and this also indicating the leaves irregular with a very strong teeth. The important is the trembling brush. The important is have the tip facing the bottom part and make the petal broken. For example, here suggests the highlights. Here suggests the highlight. Here also suggests the petal on the other side, not showing all the color. Because if you have color all over, you do not see the petals. The next one will be hydrangea. The flower could be very much uh, light blue or purplish blue. The one on screen is white one. To show the uh, body of the whole flower, it's hard because there's an uh, outline. So we may say, why not uh, add a little bit of uh, bluish color? This is what I'm going to do. And. Uh, there are two huge ones, no young ones at all. And uh, the important thing is this few facing us, and this few going away, and this one facing the right. And the technique of making this is very close to the plum blossom. The circle, the circle, and the circle with the greenish dots in the middle, or yellowish green dots in the middle. Huge leaves. But I remember, I never use the same kind of green for the plants. I use a very dark one for the leaves behind. I use a very light one in front. Well, sometimes I may have a little brownish to show either young or old, similar to each other, these two. I'm going to show you one small flower facing us by doing three circles. Then if you're going to show the other one facing our way, this is a very much close to the lessons you have learned, the plum blossom. And here we we we'll have another one facing, then another one facing, another one facing that way, then another one even more, such as the side view. And here, when is behind, 
And until you develop such a way, this partly hidden, you do not see. And here you will see oh, some more, the front view. Sideway, and uh, this one facing down almost. And this one very clearly is behind. Looks like the front need one or two more. And a few strokes suggesting the flower. I will have more petals behind, like what I'm doing. Looks like there's more flowers behind this view. Um, the important thing is that we do not make the video equally the same. Although the whole thing is uh, rounded, but I never really make the video perfect. You see this part a little higher, this part a lower. I may have uh, even one or two extended. So it's very much uh, like uh, I'm doing a very quick uh, sketches. Now I'm going to have the center part, the yellowish green. By doing so, you see the depths of each. I may add a little bit shadow for few petals. Also suggest there are more petals behind. But I'm not going to touch the center part of the uh, group of flowers. Uh, one group is not enough. We usually like to have three. But here, I like to put a smaller one to create a triangle. So this one represents two, and this one represents one. Okay. Front view. And uh, the front view behind. And uh, side view. And some more petals behind. And I will have another front view. And uh, some petals behind show more or less, create the roundness of the whole group. And by the way, I like to uh, tell you the Chinese term for this flower. They usually call this a ball flower. Means it's a ball for the silk or uh, things they play with. It's a soft ball. It's uh, not really a ball, but uh, they usually use this word. Okay, here's the center, here's the center, here's the center, here's the center. By adding this, I'll suggest the dimension. I may add a few shadows. Oh, 
Okay, now very clearly the flower must go this way. Alright, then I will have uh, big leaves and uh, hair. It's a very round, big leaf. Then we need another dark and a strong leaf here. Uh, the, this part is rounded and the tip is uh, pointed. Darken in this place, bring out the white. And I'm going to have one more leaf here. Okay, I almost finished this group. Uh, looks like I have to enlarge the triangle. Side view. This is a, a very um, and uh, the same story for this place. I need a very dark one. Then I need a secondary one. A young one. And uh, uh, once again, a big one. consider that it's hard but I like to tell you the trick this is the top of the ball we start the movement here coming down down this is supposed to stand behind holding the uh, flower and come down here then move interesting some place uh, uh, much lighter automatically suggests the uh, vent on left side of the stem 
the van always bent to the left. On the right side, they always bent to the uh, right. And here, here is the postcode this way. And this one goes this way because on the right side. Steer on the right side. Sometimes I make the veins a little bit out of the ring. The white opening actually is my idea showing the highlights and the shadow. For example, we may add a little bit of yellow here. We may add a little bit of yellow here. Okay, now I mentioned about it to have a little bluish color. I will try. I'm going mixing to water with a very yeah. I'm going to have that. I will let uh, my brush go freely. Surely this blue is much lighter than the outline. So it is uh, perfectly alright to have the blue on top of the outline. The front one still very pale, almost like white. Oh, you will say why I add some more blue here. This is the way to suggest this part is uh, up high and this part is turning away. Since you have seen the completed outline one, I think it's good for you to see my technique. I wash the outline flower with very light blue. You see I reinforced here, make this corner darker, but I'm not going to touch that. So this will be my demonstration. Okay, then look at the composition. I make this in to have my name signed here. I believe after a while, when we review the, all the demonstrations, you will see this one become much paler. This one will be morning glory. And there are so many different kinds of things. But the master in China, they like to paint morning glory this way, meaning the upper part round and have some openings and here it goes down. And uh, this is uh, once again the Chinese philosophy. We're going to see the flower from the side. We do not have a way to show 
looking down to the flower. And in front, uh, more or less looks like bird's eye view, but uh, not completely. It's paler and uh, showing more the center part. The way to do this is first you have this line, then one, two, three behind it. And the most important you have to practice by having the brush hesitated here and I picked it up. The, all the pointed part must facing the center of this flower. Same here. You see, one, two, and three. All the pointed part facing the center. Many of my students try to follow this and they miss the point. They make the strokes beautifully. Exactly the same shape, but the wrong direction. I like to show you another kind of a morning glory. The top of the flower, not even, not rounded. Each petal was some kind of a pointed tip. Uh, actually, this gives you more freedom uh, because this stroke doing from center out, not necessary to pay attention to the roundness of the top. You can see this is very high and this is very low. And uh, this is even not like a regular flower type, it's a broken. This is a very much the free style. I'm going to show you both. I'm going to show you the first one. The stroke is like this. Then I hesitate here and I hesitate here. Now, now you remember what I said. All the pointed are facing the center. And I'm going to make another one. Then I will make one or two more. After that, I'm going to show this part. You may make this part outline. to add a yellow. So just the center of the flower. Oh surely some uh, southern school artists they just use a block and the gray for the leaves. Oh, I have to show you how to make this one.
also the leaves of uh, this kind of flower so different from each other. Some uh, a bit longer, some are short. Some with uh, three out, some just one piece in the shape of an egg. And uh, they usually come in such a way You can see how much we enjoy the freedom. But if you have been in the garden in the summertime, you may see it is really, truly the moving such a way. Actually, some of them with a, a kind of a very fine throne. Surely also make the painting more interesting. Okay, then lastly, we're always at the veins. Without veins, we do not really know the position of those leaves. Some of them should be broken and dry. I like to have one yellow butterfly here. Also, it's just a suggestion. This butterfly is going to land. So our movement is a lot of uh, overall to go to go with uh, the first flower. Goes this way and then come back again, goes this way, come back again, goes this way, come back again. you another way of making the morning glory by having oh sorry this is a different kind of a uh, morning glory with this part pointed actually I'm moving my brush 
down going for this part. Still, the the young ones will remain very much the, the same. Looks like I need uh, one or two more here. Then after that, we'll do the same. Then leave it the yellow. This is a suggestion. No detail needed. Then we're going to have a green color. For, for the young ones. My brush dances. Okay, then we're going to have uh, leaves. This one I'm going to make uh, the whole thing from uh, going up here. From here down, I have to keep the brush upright.
surely this star will be so free and will show you many leaves are broken. finish the painting. Then either here or here. Or also we may have a, a signature. It will have best class. The have best class also have so many different kinds. Some are uh, double petals, some are uh, single petals. The one on screen, the single petals only have five. Uh, we select the single petal flower because it's easy to paint and easy to identify those petals. When it doubled or many petals, not only hard to paint, and also uh, not easy to see the difference between those petals because they're very, very strong color. And uh, in China, this is the symbol of a uh, wife. Because the olden days, the family very poor. The wife used uh, the branches here instead of to have a silver or gold pin to tie uh, her hair together. And this is the way uh, they use this part and shape it as a hairpin to tie all the long hair together. So in the classic books, you say, my hibiscus means my wife. That is a very interesting thing. And uh, uh, surely the uh, leaves also have a different type of shape. But generally speaking, they are very close to the uh, mulberry tree leaves. The mulberry leaves in China are quite common because everybody knows the shape. So in this case, the flower in Chinese language called the Fu Song. Song is mulberry tree. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. You can see now the dark color in the center, the light color outside, and with a few lines indicate the fence on each petal. I'm going to use yellow, not the, the bright red, also not the deep red. Surely there are so many different kinds of color I just mentioned. To your hibiscus in yellow color. You, you see my hand and the position of my brush. The brush carries so much yellow now and with brown and orange at the tip. This is the first stroke.
I'm going to continue. This sing single petal, I will have five. They will say, how about those the broken part? The broken part, actually, I'm going to suggest the highlights and also the veins. I will make another one. Okay, then another one on this side. Uh, surely this will be a little bit for shortened. Also, once again, for short. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you the uneven ages. Then I'm going to show you the same idea. This is the characteristic of the hibiscus, always with this kind of a lines all over the petal. Even the white ones, the red ones, they all have this. The curved line also suggests the, the roundness, suggests the depth. Then I'm going to have a I noticed some place the vein uh, disappeared because when I add uh, the vein on the orange and uh, the petal still wet. So I'm going to reinforce the by darkening a few places. So make the fence very interesting. This part grayish and this part orange. Because I just mentioned it disappears because the uh, petrol is still wet. Okay. Surely the, this part is also yellow. Then yellow against yellow, you cannot see. Oh, right. Then we're going to have uh, green.
then surely the stem will come down. Okay, I'm going to show you one video. Uh, looks like clouded, but this is the way it's supposed to be, suggesting the, the, the center part of the plant is here, and this one is coming towards. Now, beginning here, the extension of the center line will be our stem. And here goes down. They are all connected now. And this will belong to this one. Okay, then we're going to have leaves. I just mentioned they are very big, heavy leaves. Characteristic of this, not only round here, but also have few openings. Irregular. This part of a stem could make two pins, two hair pins for <laughs> for the poor wife. I like this kind of uh, quick movement, very smooth, very spontaneous, and make the flowers so fresh, make the plants itself also with life. I believe this painting showing pretty much the characteristic uh, part of this flower. The heavy leaf and strong color. And uh, remember I purposely made a, a triangle here. 
the triangle, triangle idea always, my teachers say, suggests growing, suggests life. It's true, this is the center part of the plant, and this is one branch coming out from the whole thing. So it really suggests life, suggests uh, the plants expanding. We will have a very short while to review all the flowers I made. This is the roses I made first with the technique by adding white on very soft surface of rice paper with uh, the pink running all over. And because of the softness, because of the running of the pink, the white part create each petal. We have also another tape, the piani. I show the same technique by adding white to the pinkish color, but uh, that is not uh, roses. That is a uh, piani flower. That tape was the name just as simple as uh, piani. And uh, there is uh, no other way to make the flower right besides uh, observe the real flower very carefully. And we need uh, constantly, again and again, making the exercises. This painting showing the day lily and the one grasshopper. The interesting thing still, once again, I mentioned about creating a triangle. One and two and a three. And a one and a two and a three. Uh, surely the uh, yellow range a little bit here and there. But uh, this is what we know the brush painting supposed to be. I recall uh, the master Chibaish's uh, woodcut uh, prints showing all his uh, flower and uh, instead's painting. The woodcut maker purposely add water to the wood block to make the ink rinse slightly. And so make this really interesting, like the, just freshly, a few seconds ago, the master finished that stroke. The puppy here, I uh, mentioned about uh, the traveling hands and uh, making this part uh, very much wrinkled. But also I like to mention about uh, these kind of strokes all relate to the bamboo leaves. This is the reason why uh, my teacher uh, asked me to practice bamboo many, many times, again and again, because you see the brush lands and takes off. Although I'm creating a very a different kind of leaves with many, many strokes pointed on both ends to show the uh, leaf of puppy. And I believe a student must understand that. Now you see the flower I made the outline first and then later I wash with blue. There's a not right also, it's not possible to have the light blue first, have all the petals done, because they are too light and too many gathered together, very crowded to each other. The only way to separate those petals is to make outline.
the second one, uh, morning glory. And surely each petal uh, was a pointed tip. The composition very much remained the same. This is the last one I made. Yeah, look at the huge leaves, uh, contrast to the very bright yellow flowers. And we have to do this to show the characteristics of this kind of uh, flower, hibiscus. And this is the end of my tape, the summer flowers. I like to uh, do some more like the four flowers and including the uh, vegetables, fruits and also when I have more time I will continue to make uh, winter flowers or rather a winter garden showing different kind of plants in the winter time.